The following article was written by a founding father of Alpha Phi Delta, Ferdinand F. DeBartolo. The article addresses the origins of Alpha Phi Delta and was published in December 1929 in the magazine of Alpha Phi Delta, the predecessor of the Kleos. It is well nigh impossible to set down an adequate account of the early history of Alpha Phi Delta without a fleeting glance at the hopes, aspirations, struggles, and disappointments experienced in the laying of the foundations which later were to support the gigantic superstructure that has since been developed by the master builders of our organization. The tiny seed that was planted in a mighty ideal in 1914 slowly germinated and was nurtured by the bubbling enthusiasm of a mere handful of fellows who gave freely of their time and substance. In speaking of the forces that led to the inception of Alpha Phi Delta, we must go back to the 5th of November, 1913, when Il Circolo Italiano was formed in Syracuse University at the home of the late Professor Charles Cabin, head of the Department of Romance Languages of the College of Liberal Arts. There were then seven Italian students who formed the active membership. At that meeting, I had the honor of being elected president of the organization. The Circolo was very active and succeeded in attracting the attention of the entire university with artistic and elaborate programs given at regular intervals. It culminated with Italian Night, which drew hundreds of people from the university from the city of Syracuse and a number from out of town. The affair was held at the Cosmopolitan Clubhouse of which organization I was also the president. It is impossible to give adequate praise to the committee in charge whose untiring efforts and unbounded resourcefulness were responsible for the marvelous success of the evening. The university paper, the Daily Orange of February 9th, 1914, and the city papers profusely described the affair in their columns. I quote from the headlines. Italian evening proves to be a wonderful success. Cosmopolitan clubhouse transformed into beautiful summer garden for occasion. Sparkling fountain adorns miniature fairyland. Rare paintings of Italian art receive commendation of guests. Many faculty members show interest. Cosmopolitan Club like a bower of fairyland. It was at the conclusion of this event, as we became reminiscent, that Cecidio Guarini, Anthony Frascati, and I agreed to form a fraternity. For weeks we discussed the matter from every angle. We met after classes and at night. We sounded the other fellows. We proposed plans, argued, and became more and more determined that the formation of a fraternity was a need. On October 20th, 1914, the first official meeting of Alpha Phi Delta was held. The brothers present were Cecidio Guarini, Anthony Frascati, Nicholas Frunzi, Otto Giovermini, Dominic Cioli, Joseph Canjamila, and myself. Brother Frunzi was unanimously chosen chairman pro tempore. The names proposed for the organization were Alpha Iota Alpha and Alpha Phi Delta. The latter name was chosen. The rest of the evening was spent in discussing plans for the future. Enthusiasm ran high. On November 5, 1914, after a long and lively discussion, the oath was formulated and the sword was adopted as the symbol to swear upon. Each one of us was then duly sworn. We thus became full-fledged Alpha Phi Delta men and ready for the task that lay before us. Before we could actually function as a fraternity, however, it was necessary to get recognition from the university authorities. Since I was an instructor in the College of Liberal Arts, I was chosen chairman of a committee to interview Dr. James R. Day, Chancellor of the University, to obtain his approval. 
Dr. Day was very cordial, as usual, and after talking together for about three quarters of an hour, gladly granted his permission. It would be unfair to try to give the personnel of the different committees appointed, since every member of the organization readily lent a hand in every bit of the work that there was to be done. There was so much to be accomplished, and only seven of us to do it. As I remember them, the following are some of the committees appointed that completed the task assigned to them. Constitution, Ritual, Pin, Coat of Arms, Charter, Banner, Whistle and Grip, National Cup Competition, Scholarship, Motto, Pledge, etc. In the meantime, Brother Frunzi had transferred from Syracuse University to Columbia, where he was instrumental in establishing the Beta Chapter. Thus, the Alpha Phi Delta Fraternity came into existence. When, in 1917, I made my residence in Buffalo, New York, my first thought was to form a chapter in the local university, where I had met a number of fine fellows, among whom Brother Joseph A. E. Syracuse was a never-ending source of inspiration. A meeting of those interested was called in the music room of the Grosvenor Library. The news spread like wildfire, and at the appointed time the room was filled to capacity. About 50 fellows were present. I presented the facts to them, and a heated and lengthy discussion followed. A few weeks later, Epsilon Chapter was formed at the University of Buffalo. I refrain from speaking of the many objections that in the formative years of the fraternity have had to be surmounted, of the disappointments met, the disillusions experienced, the discouragements weathered. These unpleasant things have had to be conquered in all worthwhile undertakings, and in retrospection, they pale into insignificance. The unparalleled success that our fraternity has experienced vindicates its existence. From the time of its birth, Alpha Phi Delta has been growing continuously and sending its roots deeper and deeper into the lives of thousands of young men in the universities of America, giving light, strength, and inspiration. A power for good, beneath whose influence we glory. Nor is it star setting, but radiant still it lights the way to countless individuals who find guidance in its spreading rays. To you, young student members, falls the mighty challenge of keeping its glorious past untarnished. Into your hands we have placed the torch. Keep it high and pass it on ever shining to those who follow.